So uh, just a short complementary explanation concerning some routines that we have, which I'm actually kind of rediscovering because I haven't used them for a while. Um, in, in order to maneuver through the collection of, uh, of lettuces or so. Um, there are different ways to describe the lettuces or so. So uh, we are now talking about the situation that we have a collection of lettuces. We want to see whether, I don't know, a GABA multiplier using one lettuce uh, is better than a GABA multiplier using another lettuce. What is the best approximation of a given operator from one family by an operator from the other family and all these things. So it turned out that we used different formats and I would like to explain uh, these routines. Uh, they were also always done by uh, internship uh, people. So the any to all command uh, is saying, well, all these different descriptions can be recognized by their form. So until now we had this lattice point routine, which is creating a zero one matrix. So if you have a large collection of hundreds of lattices of n not too small, that would be a stack of such things, which is a huge object requiring a lot of storage. And so, and manipulation might be also not so easy. So we have this routine any to all. So the input would be more or less any standard idea the output would be all the possible formats. And that's why this routine is good to explain the, the um, ideas behind this. So if my input would be NAB, that's the way how we choose it. I'm not sure, probably I could try it here. If any to all would allow to have GAB, yeah, no, that's not possible, but uh, it's kind of the parameters of, of the lattice. So it's a N, by n lattice, so I'm describing a lattice in phase space of n times n. And the first one would be, of course, the lattice lambda. So that would be the st standard lattice points of a times uh, lattice points of size n with a and b. We know the adjoint, which will be lattice points with um, n over b, n over a. That's what we have already. But now comes the NAPS. And NAPS is just the description in terms of N and A and B and some S parameter. S is standing for shift. And the NAPSA is of course the same, uh, but for the joint lattice, and it's also some shift parameter. So when we talk about NAB, it's a family of, uh, uh, which has, um, which has uh, no shift parameter. And we know, of course, also that uh, the second parameter of the joint lattice is n over a, and 480 by 20 is clearly 24, and this 480 by 16 is 30. So it's clear that these are the NAPS parameters for a standard a, b, or computer. On the other hand, we can say, well, these are points in the, in the time frequency plane. So for example, if you want to study jitter error, you can say, well, I get some points in the plane, but now I want to move them around. Maybe every point is allowed to move two pixels to the left and to the right and one pixel up and down in a random fashion or so. Then it's good to know uh, these indices. So we could of course uh, create, uh, yeah, uh, we have, let's see if the size of the index. Uh, sorry not index, index, yeah, yeah, maybe uh, the index would be just the, uh, the find of the lattice point. So uh, and the x is find of uh, lambda. That would be a, a collection of coordinates and they would be in, in MATLAB. If you are interested to find uh, that's something I, I was doing in a little bit more, more complicated fashion. If you're interest, interested in the row index and column index in the two dimension matrix, you would have this. And I would say, let's, yeah, let's look at this. Uh, uh, yeah, well, you would say, you find out that uh, the first 
I don't know what this is, 30 positions are in the first column and uh, yeah, maybe column index number one to 10 or so, you would see they're all in the first column, but the row index is in one, which is zero, zero plus 16 is shift by one is 17 and so on. So you see, you're going down with B equals 16 or so. Okay, so this would be just a list in the MATLAB coordinate sense. And of course, uh, the corresponding list has 700, uh, 320 indices. And now I would say, uh, yeah, and there's some alternative way which I don't even remember at the moment or so. But now I'm doing uh, the site stigmat command and uh, to show you lums is site stigmat of lums. So this was a routine that was useful for creating the Cornelenburg symbol, um, but uh, spy slums should show you this slanted lattice. And, uh, oh, come on. Ah, there's an error in lum. It was searching for a variable that didn't exist. And you see, it's something like this, plot x. Maybe we zoom to see a little bit better and try it once more. So you see, this is at least a good example of a slightly oblique lattice or so. And uh, uh, now I want to explain uh, the, the S parameter or so. So what you observe here is that any lattice that you can construct has only a certain regular pattern in the sense of certain columns which are occupied. So here we are having some columns which are uh, the first column, which you, can, you cannot see because of the, of the uh, uh, thing. Maybe I'm using this here a little bit. Not sure if it works. So uh, essentially, uh, yeah, okay, so a little bit better, but not really. Uh, so uh, it's not true. No, yeah, so this is better. So you don't have arbitrary spread out of this. So maybe um, there are intermediate things like the Quincux lattice. The Quincux lattice is like uh, the five on a dice. So you would have a point in the middle. Then you would say, well, the next column. Um, and so what? What is the a? It's it's just uh, the distance to the next column which is occupied. What is the B? It's how far do you go down in the first column that you have? And you know, there is always a zero in, in every group element. Therefore, the first column is always occupied and there may be elements and typically there are elements here. And so the B tells how far do I have to go down to have the first hit in this row? What is the A? How far do I have to go to the right to find a column which is occupied? And then of course the S parameter is here. How do how much I have to go down? If we are talking about the matrix, and so if I say now this uh, slanted uh, lattice, it's the same lattice constants, but it goes down by four. And now you can play around. You can of course uh, try to say what if you are uh, uh, taking and it to all, I'm not sure if that works, is N, A, B, four. Yeah, it works. But if you would like to do it with three, uh, it tells you, I cannot find a lattice, which is not the problem of the program, but rather a good sign because it says, if you would take uh, uh, the points here and something with three here, and then you generate the group, uh, which is coming from this, you would not get uh, anything reasonable. So that that's maybe, so the, the other side description is 
any lattice that you could create is, is having such a description. And uh, there is, and that's also quite important uh, for, for a systematic study of Garber stuff and not, not widespread and also not so well documented. You could say, well, let's generate all the, let, all the lattices and uh, uh, what you see here is uh, uh, that you get a NAPS list, which is a list of four parameters. And clearly this is the most compact list. So what is the input? I'm saying I'm interested in all the lattices corresponding to a phase space of form n times n. So for Gabor analysis of signals of length n. And, uh, and I would like to do it. Uh, so maybe I'm just showing you the same thing for uh, different n. Well, for example, I could take 400, uh, 512 in the redundancy. Now we have to be careful. If it's a power of two, all the subgroups have to an order, which is another power of two. So we can only take redundancy critical, which is not good. So two, four and so on. So let's see how much we get in this situation here. And meanwhile, I'm explaining this here. This would be a stack and the stack, if I remember correctly, would be really just a, a, a layer where the first, the second group that I have generated with the short description in the NAPS format is, is, is listed. And the tab is the list of all the indices. Uh, and uh, I'll have tab to tab. Yeah, uh, I could also do this so here. Okay, I wanted to see how many we get. So once more, in the standard case, uh, all the lattices that we would have and the difference to the first picture we had today is I'm not just looking at the interesting separable lattices, which would be the ones with shift parameter zero, but I would get many more. But here I have fixed the redundancy, whereas in the upper example, I have variable redundancy. And you see here, I'm getting, okay, it's interesting. I'm getting 511 uh, lattices. But uh, if you would look at the redundancy, probably they are, they are not so nice, yeah. But okay, I'm, I'm surprised, yeah? So I was not expecting so many lattices, but maybe uh, the number of separable lattices is small, whereas the number of uh, oblique lattices, so the one with this shift parameters is, is getting larger or so. Okay, now, uh, so the final thing is, what is the table? This is the list of all the indices of these. And there is this command, uh, uh, Taba is top to taba of top and n. I have to tell uh, the list that uh, it is a list of uh, indices, and I have to convert the indices from norm uh, from uh, top and okay, so this. Uh, I see, uh, there was a problem. Uh, I forgot to say that uh, I, I have done the last table with 512. That's why I have a problem. And I wanted to show the taba is the list of indices of the adjoint lattices. And therefore, if I take the joint of the joint lattices, which is tab to taba of taba, that should be the original one. So let me see. and finish in this case. So once more, I have routines that are generating all possible lattices with a given redundancy. You can say, well, uh, what are the possible redundancies? Uh, of course, uh, uh, all divisors of 512 squared, pure power of two is not so, so big. Um, 
Yeah, probably it's 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 doing something stupid here because. I forgot here, the 512, the second part. Okay, so I should come to an end, but first I did, let's try to do this. 512. Yeah, and here you see the possible redundancies are, are, are quite limited if you take a pure power of any prime numbers of two here. So I could take away from the critical one, I could only take two, four or eight or a huge redundancy. So actually for practical purposes, I would just say, well, I would only take uh, the ones which are redundancy two and four. Um, but we have seen already with the separable lattices, we have huge redundancies. And uh, it's an interesting question in the multidimensional case, whether all the possible redundancies are taken by the separable lattices. So what, what I can show you or what, what is true in the continuous setting, um, I think that could be interesting for some of you. You can get all the lattices, um, um, of, let's say all the lattices are so-called symplectic lattices. So uh, they are obtained by a transformation from the standard lattice by some symplectic matrices. Now, the, uh, that means the redundancy is not changed by these deformations. So the cytic mat would be one of those uh, routines or so. And therefore, all the possible redundancies are the same as the ones with the separable lattices. Well, I'm, I'm quite sure that even simple number theoretical consideration tells you that you can get all possible, or yeah, I think that should be true. You get all possible redundancy. Maybe, maybe I'm, I'm doing this here. And by taking all the divisors, yeah, well, that, that's a, that was a triviality. All possible divisors of our of the group order of our phase space is this, but you see here uh, the divisor. The okay, I see these are the divisors of uh, that we have here, and then you have to look at the, those which are close to four hundred eighty, and you see. Uh, you can do a slightly uh, smaller and slightly larger or so. So we see 720 is one possible redundancy. So the redundancy that can appear between redundancy critical, which is 480, and redundancy uh, 3 over 2, there are already 1, 2, 3, 4 choices. And I could run uh, my routine now and say how many with redundancy between critical, let's say this, and redundancy, this is can be obtained. So that would be uh, quite just just an easy command or so. So meanwhile, of course, on the left hand side, everything is fine. So the joint list of the joint list is the original list, of course. That was just to confirm this situation. Okay, I think uh, we have reached the end of today's presentation. The second part was quite short. Uh, but feel free to send questions to me and thank you for your attention.